Hey guys, welcome back to another V Plays. We're taking a look at the P1056, otherwise known as the Westland. This is the Tier 8 British Heavy aircraft after the Hornet. And this plane is a pig. Not only is it a pig because of the interesting snout that it has, but it's also a bit of a pig because it has the same upgrade upgrade problems that we discovered when we were going through the Hornet. It starts out with relatively lethargic guns with only 420s in the front, which are relatively the same as the Hornet that you had previously with slightly more damage output, but, but by comparison for the tier, it might as well be just on par. It does have the capability, however, to upgrade it to larger guns, which in this case is another set of 20s, or we're trying out the Rolls-Royce 40mm cannons that are mounted on the wings. Let's see what type of damage they're capable of doing when they actually hit. Not too shabby, a little bit better than what I was experiencing previously. And it also can get a pretty decent air to ground loadout as well. This thing can carry... Whoop, takes a while to overheat too. This thing can carry 2,000 pound bombs in addition to being able to carry rockets. But something to bear in mind when you're flying this aircraft is that same problem with the Hornet, it doesn't have a lot of speed for what it is. So as a result, I have stripped this thing clean until I can get the engine upgrades and I am upgrading it in the same way I was upgrading whoa, the Hornet, which was I went with the guns first in order to get a little bit more boom out of my boom and zoom aircraft. As you can see, the speed is relatively lethargic here, but those cannons seem to be doing some good for me. I was having a heck of a time being able to do some serious damage on threats, and now it looks like we're able to get some more out of it. The other downside of this aircraft is that it only gets a 20 second boost, which is not great. Ooh, those 40s. Somebody told me not to get the 40s, that they weren't that good, but I am going to beg to differ at this stage. As you can see, they're doing pretty good for being able to chunk away some of that damage. 1,000 pound bombs are great, but you don't get the rockets initially like you did with its predecessor because the rockets that you're looking for on this are actually going to be a different set of rockets. Gotcha. Which are going to require another upgrade involving 6,000 experience points just to upgrade those. Now, this is what I was hoping for, was the ability to go up in the front of the heavy see if I could cause any serious damage. Now that aircraft is more maneuverable and faster than me, so let's see if we can get the heck away from them while we still can. Oh, we are getting some speed, and if we are faster than him, it looks like, in the dive. I don't remember going this fast in my XF5U. So it may need to eat crow a little bit on this one. Maintain some separation, but he can outclimb us for days, and that's going to be a problem for us. Looks like he's taken some hits from the team, which is good, but we can't afford to turn around because if he catches us, he's going to have a much bigger advantage when it comes to a turning fight. So now that he's gone, let's double back and go back to work on these enemies. We lost a zone. Nope, these are the same four zones we started with. For some reason, I thought we had five. So the thing's ugly. The thing can't climb over 6,500 feet uh, without running into problems with engine power, but with these cannons, it doesn't need to stay there too long, apparently, so not too bad. Let's build up some of that boost. Let's level off a little bit. We can always pull up on that target, and this is a maneuver I use quite often. A lot of people want to just keep climbing towards bombers, but that's not the best move in most instances. You want to maintain your forward momentum, otherwise if something else comes up, we are going to have problems trying to engage, or disengage I should say, from the threat. The cannons, the 40s, are much shorter range, so you kind of have to wait for optimum targeting. That was not too bad, and a very quick match. It looks like the enemy didn't put up much of a fight for us. So let's go and take a look at the upgrade tree and see how we did for experience as well as equipment upgrades. 6,000 combat points is not great, but considering that we're in invasion mode, it seems to either go really, really well or go really, really poorly. And when it goes really well, you get a lot of combat points, and when it goes poorly, you don't get nearly as many. So let's take a look at what we got. We got 64,000 experience out of this. I am not running universal 
ammo. Being that it is a tier 8 aircraft, we are getting quite a significant experience gain, including the fact that we are running a premium account, which is boosting us quite significantly as well, which is great, because what we really need is we need to get this marksman to on here. This thing needs it. Or at the very least, maybe engine guru to, because this thing needs either engine power or it needs guns. But I think it's a little bit too early to decide since we don't have any of those upgraded yet. Here's a thousand pound bombs you can equip from its predecessor, but with a 503 mile an hour cap, taking away 12 miles an hour off of the aircraft seems like it would be a bad idea, and you also lose 6 miles an hour by equipping guns as an external weapon source. You can see it's got these little nodules on the wing as a result of mounting those cannons. And you do have the option of 620mm cannons, which means that you've got the 4 in the nose and these 2 on the wings, which are the exact same guns, Hispano Mark V's. But if you take a look at the damage output of each one of these and the range, Yes, it's slightly decreased range, but with 240 damage per second on these Rolls-Royce 40mm cannons, they do quite a bit of work. That was probably the best game I've had in this aircraft since I purchased it, and that was also the first battle mounting these 40mm. Now, you'll notice on my equipment slot, I am not running, running what I typically run on this aircraft. Usually, I'm running engine tuning, and I'm running the improved aircraft polish but when I had that on here this aircraft is so unmaneuverable with a 14 second turn time that it's not even the turn time necessarily as much as it is the ability for the aircraft to maneuver in order to get the guns on target for those slight hairline adjustments you need to be able to make to get the guns on target this gives you that maneuverability and decreases the amount of power loss when your flaps are engaged during a turn when not boosting or braking. So this is going to make life a lot easier for when you're on approach to an engagement and you just want to get those guns on the enemy as you're closing, which we did several times during the last battle. So I'm going to suggest going with this, and if you don't believe me, try going with the original setup and just see how bad this aircraft is at maneuvering. And it may be the engine power, but I doubt that that's it. This aircraft is also huge. This is a huge aircraft. I mean, let's just compare it to, oh, I don't know. <clears throat> let's compare it to this aircraft. Not nearly as fat in the body. Granted, long wings, but just look how wide and fat and big. Just unbelievably large airframe. And it definitely causes it some serious issues when it's going up against some other aircraft. Uh, here is the pancake. Yes, the pancake is also noted for having a lot of surface area, but look how relatively compact that large amount of surface area is. I mean, it's all body slash wing, but look at this thing. It's huge. So you're going to get hit in this aircraft, and I have been piloted on many occasions, so just bear that in mind that that is something that's probably going to happen to you. Now, I am still running pneumatic starter as well as the engine ventilation in order to get some of that boost and that kind of saved my life against the XF5U earlier because again this thing only gets a 20 second boost it's, it's a heavy jet fighter and a 20 second boost Ugh. but if the last battle is a sign of things to come with more engine power that's going to make things a lot better. Now, I also said that you're going to get different rockets. The rockets you're going to get on air this airframe are going to be different than the ones that you had on the Hornet. And the Hornet's rockets... There you go. Another 500 damage per rocket and some more experience over here as well. And I suggest not doing the rocket or the bomb until you get the jet engine upgrades and that kind of sucks because we put demolition expert on the hornet which means that now we're going to be suffering with this aircraft until we can get the next jet engine so we can start putting some munitions back on the aircraft but we're only getting a six mile an hour boost off of new engines you'll end up getting 12 or 19 total but uh, another 13 off of this engine so you'll get a decent bump when you get the final engine but it's one of these tricks right like are you going to fully upgrade it or do you want to save that 30,000 XP so you can get to a really good aircraft that can mount 
four thirty millimeter cannons. I've seen the Gloucester in action and this thing is nasty and it has even more maneuverability than the Westland does which means it probably doesn't have the same issues that we have in this aircraft where we had to mount those improved flaps. So all in all I think we're getting there and I would like to do another video on this aircraft when I'm further along but as for right now I'm still going to keep calling this thing the pig and I think it would be awesome for all the camo that these guys put in here these special little paint packages I'd be willing to spend gold if somebody were to paint this plane pink and give it wings like in a pig snout with like eyes and I think you could probably make the canopy make it kind of look like it's the that flight cap that old leather flight cap it just by having some of the straps kind of come off the side of the uh canopy here and give it a couple of eyes and this thing would look like a pig with like one of those mouths with the square teeth that kind of widen out in the corners maybe with a cigar sticking out of it i think this thing would look hilarious and i would put that paint on this and i would probably end up keeping the aircraft just because of the aesthetics of the flying pig so Wargaming, if you ever see this video, make this a flying pig. It would be hilarious. Anyways, if you like the video, like, favorite, comment, subscribe. Let me know what I'm doing good. Let me know what I'm doing bad. And we'll try and make them better. Have a good one, guys.